When Allah has given you the capacity to pick up your phone and look for jobs online from your phone, but you say, no, I rely on Allah. That is false reliance. The hadith says, tie your camel, then say, I rely on Allah. Bismillahi walhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon all conditions. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. We ask Allah to bless them, to bless all those who struggled and strove over the generations in a way that today we are where we are. We've taken the goodness from them. They indeed deserve our prayer for blessings. May Allah bless them, bless every one of us, bless our offspring, those to come up to the end. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all every form of goodness. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, you and I know that we were created by a creator. And you and I know that life will not last forever. You and I know that we are going to die one day. Whether we like to talk about it or not, it's a reality that's definitely going to come. It's going to happen. You know you're going to go and you don't know when. I know I'm going to go, I don't know when. Now, when I came onto the earth, it's something amazing and unique. Just like when you came onto the earth, our parents were looking forward to having us. Those of you who don't have children, may Allah bless you with offspring who will be the coolness of your eyes. Say Amin. The excitement within parents of the good news of having a child or being expecting a child is such that it cannot be described. It needs to be felt. It needs to be felt. In most cases, especially the first child, you're expecting this first child. There is a lot of excitement. There is a little bit of uncertainty. Normally, the mothers will tell you, do you know, when I was expecting, I didn't know. I, I just hoped in the mercy of Allah. I just knew that so many others have been through this, so I can also do it. But as your belly begins to grow and as the fetus begins to grow within you, as much as you're happy that the fetus is okay and it's growing and it's beginning to kick and it's painful and it's hurtful and becoming heavy and my back is sore and I cannot sleep anymore, but there's excitement to say, mashallah, I'm going to be a mother. There is an underlying fear. What is the fear? How is this going to come out subhanallah you see what's going to happen here i wonder subhanallah that is quite normal to be worried to be concerned how is the labor going to be but guess what because you know of so many others who've gone through it you you know within yourself i'm going to cope i'm going to manage some keep on thinking i can't do it if you keep on thinking you cannot do it you will still do it but you're going to struggle because you didn't have that faith you didn't have that conviction we who believe we know that's the plan of allah allah will help you allah has chosen that way and that path whether it's through cesarean section or a normal birth you and i know that it has to happen and allah will facilitate it and as painful as it may be the moment you see the bundle it's called a bundle of joy subhanallah you tend to forget things i remember telling my wife or asking her is it true that as soon as the baby comes onto you you forget everything she says temporarily <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. I don't know if that's the same answer around here with some of our mums. Which means, yes, you are happy, you are excited. It is a sense of relief, mashallah. But as the child grows, she says, I'll never forget what I went through. No way. And you know what? The second time, there is a similar fear. The third time, there is a similar fear. With the excitement. So what will help you? There is something that will help you. If you don't have it, you will struggle. What is it? The conviction, the faith, the reliance upon Allah. Allah made me. Billions of people have been born exactly the same way. I'm going to do it by the help of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you rely on Allah, that is the most powerful act of worship. And indeed, you should lay your trust and reliance totally and wholly upon Allah if you are a true believer or if you are true believers. 
If you're true believers, you need to rely wholly, totally on Allah. I've only shown you the beginning of man's life, the life on earth. When you came onto the earth, for example, your own parents had to rely on Allah. If they didn't, they would struggle with anxiety they would struggle with depression and depression is not always caused by lack of reliance in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but at times that is a contributing factor we need to understand you don't have to add worries that you don't need to add in your life or upon your brain your mind and your system and even your heart you rely upon allah he will definitely take care of you if allah can take care of the smallest of creatures don't you think you're bigger than that <laughs> There is nothing that moves on earth except that Allah has guaranteed its sustenance. Nothing that moves on earth. Except that Allah has guaranteed to provide it what it needs. Subhanallah. This includes the ants. The ants that you and I don't even see. And the little mosquitoes, subhanallah, that irritate you and I. If that sustenance is written in your blood, subhanallah, there's nothing you're going to do about it. It's going to come and get its portion. So eat less sweets, mashallah. <laughs> May Allah grant us goodness. Allah says in the rest of that verse that Allah knows its place that it's going to come through and where it's going to leave from everything. Your birth and death is determined by Allah. Everything is already prescribed, predestined by Allah. You rely on Allah. Allah says he will provide for every single one, all his creatures, what they need. The problem with us, we become depressed because we have what we need. But we want beyond what we need. There is a difference between what you need and what you want. What you want, Allah didn't guarantee he's going to give you. What you need, Allah will give it to you. Subhanallah, it's amazing. So what do you actually need? You don't need the luxuries. You don't need so much and whatever else. You probably need a little bit of food to survive, some clothing to cover yourself, a little place that you can actually sleep, even if it happens to be under a tree. If that's what Allah has written, He's provided you what you need. But what you want, Allah still says, I will give you as much as I would like to give you. You work hard. I will still provide. You know what? To show you that I will actually give you more than not only what you deserve, but more than what you need. And then it's a test to see, will you share with others? Will you talk to others? Will you communicate with others? Will you help others? Not only financially and materialistically, even by speaking to them. Sometimes talking to someone is more valuable than a million pounds because you've spoken to them. You've moved them. You've changed their lives. People say, you know what? You've changed my life. Well, I tell you what, you need to start changing the lives of others in whatever way possible. Sometimes within our own homes, we don't even talk to each other because we forget that reaching out to people primarily starts with speaking to them subhanallah so if you rely upon allah and you understand that allah created you number one he will provide for you he will definitely give you there's no way that allah can forget you when he's provided for the ants when he listens to the discussion of the flies amazing subhanallah so look at what Allah says. If you are true believers, you rely on Allah correctly. Your reliance should be fully on Allah. You shouldn't be worried. Take cognizance of the fact that Allah is in charge. I always say, when things happen your way, say Alhamdulillah. When they don't happen your way, say Alhamdulillah twice. Because they are happening according to your boss, who is Allah, your maker. Subhanallah. I was reading an article of a sister, 1979, having arrived, some of you might have seen this, having arrived from Syria into America, and she had a little uh, delay because she refused to take off her scarf in order to take a photograph. And what happened? They missed the connecting flight. 
And as they missed the connecting flight, they later discovered that that flight was involved in a crash and everyone died. How many of us have been saved by being delayed? We get angry sometimes, agitated because of something that went wrong according to us. But according to Allah, nothing ever went wrong. Subhanallah. Someone can bash your motor vehicle completely. You walk out with a smile. Yes, it doesn't mean you say, it's okay, it's okay. Sometimes it's not okay. No. We can get out with a smile and still claim what we have to. And still say, you were wrong. Yes, I know you were wrong. But it's called an accident. No one did it purposely. But we come out of the vehicle as though they did it intentionally. Come on, subhanallah. May Allah grant us ease and guide us. Don't be angry when things don't happen your way. Because in that case, something is wrong with your belief in Allah. It's not strong enough. You need to believe that Allah was in charge. If you plan to do something, you desperately wanted to marry someone. You wanted a specific business. You wanted to buy a specific house. You wanted to do something. You needed a specific dress. You wanted to attend a specific function and it did not happen your way thank Allah double because it happened his way and he took over he saved you from something and even if you don't realize what he did for you at the time the fact that you're happy with what Allah decided for you would actually earn you closeness to Allah Allah decided it for you so don't worry you've lost out on nothing the only time you blame yourself is when Allah has given you the capacity the ability to do something that is beneficial for you or to protect yourself from some harm and you sat back and said well if it's decreed let it happen like the lazy lot of today who sit at home and make dua oh Allah I've been reading five salah a day I'm getting up for tahajjud oh Allah help me help me I need sustenance oh Allah I need a minimum of a thousand pounds a week that makes it 52,000 pounds a year not a bad salary actually so oh Allah give me a thousand pounds a week and you're sitting and you just your hands are raised and your hands are raised and you're pious that pious is mistranslated it's got to do with pies, maybe meat pies, subhanallah. Because you cannot sit in your room when Allah's given you the capacity to pick up your phone and look for jobs online from your phone. But you say, no, I rely on Allah. That is false reliance. The hadith says, tie your camel, then say, I rely on Allah. Allah gave you the capacity. You cannot leave your motor vehicle open with all your pounds dangling from here and there and everything else, you know, that's valuable in your vehicle. And you say, I rely on Allah and Allah alone. He's going to take care of my car. Well, I tell you what, when you come back, everything will be stolen from the car and your car will be gone as well. Why? You were foolish. So this is why we say when Allah gave you the capacity to do something, do it. Use your brain, use your energy. That's why the hadith says, Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk wasta'in billahi wa la ta'jaz. Always, always work hard to achieve what is beneficial for you. Did you hear that? Work hard to achieve what is beneficial for you and seek the help of Allah and never give up. Subhanallah. That's called proper reliance on Allah. I locked my car. I did whatever I could. Still someone bashed, broke the window and stole something. I say, Alhamdulillah, I'm okay. Allahu Akbar. Allah didn't want me to, 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 to perhaps make use of something that was stolen. Maybe it was stolen from me. So this is all the help of Allah. You need to understand how Allah works. If you believe, you definitely will be a happy person always. You'll be content. The affairs of a true believer are amazing. Why are they amazing? When good comes in his or her direction, he is happy. She is happy. And thanks Allah. I'm thankful to Allah. How do you show gratitude to Allah, by the way? Not just by saying, Oh Allah, I'm grateful. And then we sin against Allah day and night. Even if you didn't say, Oh Allah, I'm grateful. But you fulfilled your prayer. You, ful you, you tried your best to obey what Allah has instructed you. You tried your best to abstain from prohibition because Allah has provided for you. In that case, it's true gratitude unto Allah. True gratitude is when you are trying to get closer and closer and closer to your maker. And I'd like to believe that every single one of us, without exception, within us, we have it that we want to get closer and closer to Allah as time passes. Don't we? Anyone who doesn't want to get closer to Allah as time passes, please show us your hand. 
Nobody. MashaAllah. That's what I expected. Because it goes to show deep down we love Allah. And guess what? I have good news for you today. Allah loves you too. Subhanallah. We're seated here. We want to hear a motivation. We want to feel like we're believers. Muslimin. We're good. Alhamdulillah. We're trying. I know that Allah loves us because He's provided for us much more than we actually need. Much more than we deserve at times. If you take a look at how strong we are, myself included, we need a lot of attention. We need so much of help. We need to improve ourselves from so many different angles. And you know what? Allah still provides and He still gives and He gives you more and He gives you more and He gives you this happiness and that happiness. May He never make us from those who transgress as a result of the gifts that He gives us. But still He keeps giving us even though we transgress. Look at how merciful Allah is. How can you not rely on Allah? How can you not trust Allah when Allah has promised you things and Allah has delivered those on those promises? Allah says, I'll take care of you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, don't doubt people. Don't doubt people. Don't suspect for nothing. Yes, if there's reason to suspect, you may do so. But only if there's reason. If there's no reason, you don't suspect people. You don't spy on people. Allah says, leave it to us. Don't spy on people. Because if you spy, we want to teach you something. Allah says to us, I am the most merciful, the most forgiving. Someone might have committed a mistake. I will forgive them. They will change their lives. They will become how many of us have been weak in the past. And we've committed sin. And we've changed our lives. And we no longer commit those sins. But we would be embarrassed to admit what type of sins we've committed in the past. Many of us. Don't you agree? Imagine if someone had to spy on you and knew what you were up to. They would never forgive you or they would never look at you with the eye of positivity ever because they knew what you were up to. But your life has changed. You're genuinely a changed person. Only Allah understands that. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, the whole world will let you down. Absolutely everyone will let you down. But Allah will not let you down. Allah says, my worshiper, I will forgive you by you just asking me for forgiveness even if your sins were as much as would fill from the earth to the skies. You want to hear the words? Yabna Adama, Law balagat dhunubuka anana samai, thumma staghfartani, ghafartu laka, wala ubali. لَقِيتَنِي لَا تُشْرِكُ بِي شَيْئًا The hadith says, O son of Adam, if your sins had filled from the earth to the skies full of writing, meaning if they had filled that whole space, that's how many sins you came with on the day of judgment. But you came without associating partners with me. You worshipped me, you tried. Well, I can forgive your sins without even being bothered. It won't really affect anything at all on my side. So Allah is telling us, O son of Adam, no matter what you've done, have hope in my mercy. O son of Adam, your acts of worship benefit you, they don't benefit me. So trust that I will accept them from you. Did you try? Yes, I tried. Accept it. Don't let the devil come to you and make you lose your faith in Allah. You have faith in Allah. What is the faith in Allah? He is Ghafoor, Rahim, Wadud. He is the loving, the most merciful, the most forgiving, the most compassionate. That is who Allah is. Have you ever thought about it when we say Bismillahi? The first words as we're reading the Quran, what do we say? Bismillahi, Ar Rahmani, Ar Rahimi. In the name of Allah, what did He choose as the ultimate of the first two names for us? To be repeating. What did he choose? Number one, Ar-Rahman. What's that? The most merciful. The entirely merciful. He is merciful even upon those who don't deserve his mercy. Subhanallah. That's what the meaning of Ar-Rahman. And then he says, Ar-Rahim. He has a specialized mercy for those who believe. They will feel that mercy because of that belief and conviction. When you're convinced with Allah, when you rely on Allah, when you know that the good that came to me is definitely a blessing from Allah and a test, and the bad that came to me is also a blessing from Allah and a test, then you have true belief. Then you're a believer. But if you think the bad is always a punishment, it's not, it's not. 
You know, we have tsunamis, we have natural disasters, we have death, we have so many other things, disease, sickness. A lot of these things are actually a blessing from Allah. Yes, it can be a punishment. It's all got to do with your own condition. Someone said, oh, look at Allah punishing the people of Indonesia because of what they've been doing. And I got up and I said, it's my duty to tell you that that is not necessarily a punishment. What about those who died while they were in sujood? What about those who died while they were trying to read Quran? What about those who were decent people who died and they were martyred or perhaps killed in that natural disaster? Can you ever say that it was the punishment of Allah? No, it was not. It was the mercy of Allah upon them. They died in a good condition. How many of us would like to die in sujood i would like to die in sujood yes so if allah took you away in sujood no matter how he took you away but isn't it a blessing of allah you'll be resurrected perhaps in a similar way and people say that guy was punished you see because he died natural disaster you don't know it was the mercy of allah but if someone was in the disobedience of allah at the time that's between them and allah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us so it could be the same disaster could be a punishment for some and a mercy for others, depending on how you are. And those who have survived, it depends on the condition of your heart. Those who have survived, it depends on the condition of your heart. Subhanallah, if you're a happy person, if you're, ex if you're always happy and you make the most of what's left with you, then you're definitely a believer. You believe in Allah. It's definitely a means of closeness to Allah. How many of us, when we've had disease and sickness, have we become better Muslims? Wow. So isn't that a sign of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It softened us. It made us fulfill salah. And how many of us, once we get cured, we're back with our old ways and habits. Allahu Akbar, may that not happen to us. May we always be from those whom when we are cured, we change our lives as well. And not just sickness, people cry for things to Allah. Oh Allah, I need a child, I need a child. And mashallah, after 8 years, 10 years, 12 years, 14 years I know, 18 years I've known of one case, they, they were blessed with a child. Subhanallah, may Allah bless all of us with children, Amin. Even if you're not married, just say Amin. You might be laughing, why? I can tell you why. When you say, oh Allah, grant me with good offspring who will be the coolness of my eyes, it's like a full package. It means, firstly, in order to get that, I need a husband, right? So that's included in it, okay? And I need, it's like if you, if you don't have a job and you say, oh Allah, help me to buy a, a lovely expensive car. Just an example, right? It means you're firstly going to have to get a job and earn the money or something's going to have to happen for the money to come to you, right? So... In the same way, when you say, oh Allah, grant me pious offspring, it means, oh Allah, get me the best spouse, and thereafter with us, give us the good offspring. So it's an all-inclusive two-in-one like the shampoo organics, mashallah. <laughs> okay, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So my brothers and sisters, rely on Allah. I want to give you one example. I didn't realize that I've already just got eight minutes left, but I think I'm going to overshoot today. It's not like we come to Cardiff every day. You know, they've got a long break. The reason why there's a very long break is there's two salahs there. And the timing's a little bit awkward. People are saying, why is the break so long? I can tell you, because we don't want to go out for a salah, come back, and then go back for another salah, and the timing is so short. Rather have that little break. You can have a snack. We can do a few other things. Read the next salah, and then come back. That's why it's a little bit longer. So bear with us. Be happy, inshallah. Be happy. Allah grant us ease. May Allah open our doors. I'll give you an example. You see, Allah's promise is true. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقٌ O oh, oh, people, Allah's promise to you is absolutely true. وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثًا وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا Who can there be more truthful than Allah regarding His speech, regarding what He has said, regarding His promise? كَانَ عَلَى رَبِّكَ وَعْدًا when Allah promises us Jannah and paradise and goodness, He says, this is a promise that you can ask Allah about. You can hold Him responsible to the promise He's made. Allah said, whoever seeks forgiveness, I will forgive them. If you have sought forgiveness and you go on the day of judgment, you can ask Allah, oh Allah, I sought forgiveness, my forgiveness. You won't even need to ask Allah. Do you know why? It will definitely be that your sin is wiped out. Don't lose hope. Don't let shaitan trap you to make you believe otherwise. Now let me tell you, Allah promised you. Unfortunately, sometimes man is such, we're ready to believe another person, but we're not ready to believe Allah. Give you an example, beautiful example. 
Okay. So you're looking for a job and suddenly you find a job and they tell you, listen, you're going to be paid. You're going to be paid how much? What's a good salary per, per, per week, let's say? What's a good salary? Can someone say? Yes. One hundred and fifty, son. I think you're a bit too young, mashallah. <laughs> okay, say it. Five hundred pounds a week. It's a good salary. Okay, someone's offering you five thousand pounds a week, and they tell you we pay you monthly. So what's that? How many weeks? Four weeks. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand a month. Oh, subhanallah. And what's the job? It's simple. You can just work at home. It's just online. You got to do X, Y, and Z. That's it. When you're done, you're okay. So you're working online a few hours and what's happening? Every day you're excited. The fact that you got the job was so beautiful. You put your signature on there or even if you just took the word for it, you're so excited. Finally and ultimately, someone has promised you that after 30 days, we, you're going to get 20,000 in your bank account. Wow. Wouldn't you be excited? I think I would, right? So now what happens when 20 days pass, you're so excited because you can start smelling the pounds, mashallah, right? 25 days, you can start smelling the perfumes you're going to be buying with those pounds, mashallah, right? 28 days and you're so excited, you're starting to plan your outing and how you're going to take your family and what you're going to, hope it's halal inshallah, but whatever else you're going to be doing, you start planning everything, you're excited because someone's promised you, you work 28 days, 30 days, I'm going to give you the salary and you work hard and you're dedicated and you wouldn't like to lose the job and you don't want someone else to take over from you and you don't want someone else to prove that they're better than you so that you can be replaced, you don't want any of that, you work so hard and exactly 30 days later, a few hours delay and you're getting excited. You want to think of whether I should call management. My money's not reflecting and I need, and I've got this commitment and that commitment. And suddenly, ping, you get an SMS, 20,000 in the bank. And you say, wow, mashallah. Now we can do what, what happened? What happened? You worked hard for 30 whole days, believing another human that he's going to give you some reward after your job. But when Allah promises you that after you work, I'm going to give you, you don't believe Allah. You don't believe Allah. Allah says, we promise you. If you believe and you do good deeds, we're going to give you a good life. If you try to discipline yourself, we'll give you a good life. Remember, happiness in this world is not connected to that which is temporary. It's not connected to that which is haram, that which is prohibited, because it will only give you moments of pleasure. But long term, it's going to come back to haunt you. May Allah not do that to us. Unless you've repented. Sometimes even if you've repented from a worldly perspective, it could come back to haunt you. How many people have tattooed themselves and later repented to Allah? The sin is totally forgiven. But if it's a permanent tattoo, guess what happens? As forgiven as you are, as sinless as you are, as spotless as you are, you're still going to be having a big tattoo somewhere because it was a permanent tattoo you did at the time when you were sinning. It doesn't mean you're not forgiven. Someone might say, well, remove it. No, sometimes it's more harmful to remove that. If you can remove something that's not really permanent, then let it be. But if it's a big one, you, you will have to live with it, even though in the eyes of Allah, you're a clean worshiper of Allah. But you had to live with the mistake you made. The same applies. Sometimes we pay for things on, on a worldly basis, but in the eyes of Allah, we don't. Allah says, you know what? I've forgiven you. So when Allah's promised you Jannah, if you do X, Y, and Z, rely on Allah, believe Him, have hope as you grow older and as you become, subhanAllah, as you grow older and as you become terminally ill, perhaps may Allah grant us all cure. But there is only one way to survive that, having hope in the mercy of Allah. You've been through a divorce, you've been through so much, you, t if someone's diagnosed you with something, you don't know what's going to happen. You can either be cured or you can either lose your life. Either way, I have hope in the mercy of Allah. Ultimately, I'm going to die. I want Jannah. I have hope in the mercy of Allah that I'm definitely going to Jannah. And inshallah, we meet each other there. Say Amin. In the company of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I'm convinced. I'm totally convinced because I'm not going to enter Jannah through my deeds. It's just my trial. But the mercy of Allah is what will get us into Jannah. It's the mercy of Allah. It's not my deeds. Allah doesn't need anything. You know what Allah subhanahu wa taala says? Yabna Adam, O son of Adam, if all of you were to gather upon the highest level of piety and the person who's the most pious ever, all of you on that level, it wouldn't increase in my kingdom even a droplet, nothing, nothing increased. And if all of you were as sinful as the most sinful person on earth, it wouldn't decrease from my kingdom even a droplet, nothing. 
It's Allah. Rely on Allah. He loves us. He made us. Do, are you trying? Yes, I am. The magicians at the time of Moses, Musa alayhi salam, one sajda after which they were executed. How many sujood did they fulfill? One. That one sajda, Allah forgave them and granted them jannah. How many sujood have you and I done? Don't you have hope in the mercy of Allah? Don't you have hope in the mercy of Allah? Keep trying. When you falter, don't lose hope. Shaitan makes you lose hope. Seek forgiveness again and again and again. Subhanallah. But when Allah promises you, mashallah, tabarakallah, you need to make sure that you believe that promise of Allah. Allah is the most merciful. From this day, we should change the way we look at things. We need to look at things positively. Not everything is negative. Yes, if you have a tough situation at home, you should do something about it in a good way. But don't become despondent. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Allah knows He's going to give you. And that's why one of my favorite verses in the Quran is in Surah Al-Duha. Allah says, وَلَا سَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى Very soon, your Rabb, your Lord, shall give you so much until you become satisfied. That will be in the dunya and the akhirah or just in the akhirah, just in the hereafter. So what? I know I'm going to get it from Allah. I want to end with a, with a last thing. My brothers and sisters, the uncertainty that I mentioned right at the beginning when a child was being born, I'd like to look at it from a different angle. Say there were twins within the womb. As the womb is stretching and as the little fetus or the, both of them are growing, when they started off, they were very little. They had the whole world around them. They thought it was, that's it, the galaxy is ours. They didn't know it was just a womb. You're inside the belly of another human who happens to be your mother. And, and you think that, wow, I can swim across the whole ocean, right? And then you start growing. And what happens? You're fighting for space. And then you grow more and more. And what do you think? The only thing you've seen is whatever is coming into you, perhaps... When your mom eats something, you can feel it, right? So you must be thinking, oh, I hope that mineral comes in. I'm just guessing, okay? I hope that that vitamin comes in. I hope this thing happens. There must be something that made us happy at the time because we started kicking at a point and sometimes we kicked a little bit more to say, yeah, let it come, let it come, you know? Subhanallah. Whatever happened. But as we became such that we couldn't find space to move, it was like, gosh, what's going to happen now? I'm sure it's the end of everything. Anyway, nice to have known you, buddy. Right? Nice to have known you, buddy. Goodbye. There's nothing else to come. That's what probably may, according to some, have happened. Right? Guess what? That was wrong. Totally wrong. Because according to those two, because they haven't seen the real world out there, they thought that was it. And as they grew and they thought it's the end and they must have said their last goodbyes and whatever, suddenly, pop! And what happened? <gasps> wow. Wow. I can't believe it. You made it too. Woo! Hi! Subhanallah. Yeah, we're here. It's so big. It's huge. We thought that was huge. This is real, man. You! We're going to be here for a long, long time. The same thing repeats itself later on in your life and mine. When you become older or, you, or you're on your deathbed, you have to have hope and conviction in the same way that we spoke about those in the womb. One day, pop! And you're going to say, woo -hoo! Everyone's crying that I'm dead, but yay, I'm in Jannah, man. Subhanallah. Don't you think that's going to happen by the mercy of Allah? Allah's promised that to you. So don't become despondent. Wow. I'd like you to think deeply about what I said. Don't become despondent. What's the worst thing that could happen to you? You're going to go back to Allah. It's not the worst thing. That's the Jannah you're going to get. Be convinced. Rely on Allah. Believe Allah. You need to know. That those who truly believe when the verses of the Quran are recited to them, their hearts tremble. Their hearts tremble. And you know what happens to them? It, it boosts their iman. It strengthens them. And they rely totally on Allah and believe what Allah says. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. I've overshot by four minutes and five seconds, but that's fine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all Jannatul Firdaus. I hope to be speaking to you after the break. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.